Greetings, everyone. My name is Brady Witten, and I welcome you to online worship here at the America Street Service of First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I want to invite you as we begin this time of worship to think about extending the gift of worship to others. Just as you're going to be blessed by this time, there may be others out there who need, uh, who need this time of worship. We're going to talk about baptism today, and we're going to uh, remember our baptisms and remember that God claims us as sons and daughters. And I just have to believe there are other people out there who would be blessed by that. So you can start a, a watch party on Facebook, or you can copy the link out of your browser and send it via text message or email, but just invite others and share with them the blessing of worship. So as I mentioned, we are going to talk about Jesus' baptism today, and we're also going to renew our baptisms. And so I want to invite you to go and to get a, get a little bowl of water and have that ready for later in our service. Uh, you're going to want to be a part of that, of that moment. So it is my prayer that during this time of worship that we will claim our identity as God's beloved children and that we will then live in this world as children of love and light. Will you join me in prayer? God of love, when Christ was baptized in the river Jordan and the Holy Spirit descended upon him, you declared him your beloved son. As we, your children, come to worship you today, we ask that you would grant that we may give our lives to your service and that we may be found worthy of our calling. Pour your Holy Spirit out upon us, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heaven thundered and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground and I hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name they shall be done. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. Sin defeated, Jesus has overcome. Mercy triumphed with the third day dawn. Darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Nothing shall be. 
Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus your God unstoppable So this has been a difficult week in our nation, and I'm going to speak to that a little bit in my sermon, but I think uh, what, a, what an important time and what a vital time for us to perform this, uh, this ritual that we perform so often, and that is the passing of the peace. And so I do want to invite you to share the peace of Christ with others. Maybe there are some people worshiping with you in your home or wherever you may be gathered, and I also want to uh, invite you to extend that blessing via text message, uh, on social media. Let's Let's let the peace of Christ radiate from this time, and may the peace of Christ be with you. So even though we are separated by uh, distance, and maybe even time, some of you may be uh, watching this at a different time from others, uh, I, I still want to invite you to interact with us, and you can do that in a variety of ways. And you'll find uh, all of these options on whatever platform that you're worshiping on. Uh, first of all, you'll find the option to fill out a connection card. And uh, that's just a way that you can let us know that you're worshiping. We want to know that you're worshiping. We care uh, that you're worshiping. And so uh, please take a moment and fill out that, that information as just, uh, you know, give us a name, give us an email address. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, I want to say welcome. I'm really glad and I'm happy that you found First Methodist, and I hope that you're blessed by this time of worship. Uh, second option you'll see is to fill out a prayer request, and you can share a joy or a concern, and it's our privilege to lift those to God in prayer. And then finally, you'll see options uh, in your practice of generosity to remember First United Methodist Church. And I hope you're uh, living a generous life and practicing a, a generous life in all ways, uh, but I do ask that you remember First United Methodist Church in that practice. And you can give uh, via text message by texting FUMC to 22525. You can always go to our church's website, and you can also mail a gift to the church, and you'll find all that information on your screen. So speaking of generosity, every year uh, we take some time as a congregation to talk about uh, the practice of generosity. Uh, it is such a life-changing uh, practice that really helps us to ask questions about our priorities, about where we put our trust, uh, and, and so it's, just, it's, it's an important thing and we always spend a little bit of time focusing on it. And uh, we're going to begin that emphasis, that generosity emphasis, this, this coming week, uh, Sunday the January 17th. So if you're on the church's mailing list, uh, you should receive some mailings from the church. I encourage you to watch out for those and to, and to take, take some time to read them and, and uh, familiarize yourself uh, with, with what we're asking you to do. Uh, and in worship, I want to encourage you to join us because we're going to hear some great testimonies from our church members about how God has been at work in their lives and how they have been blessed by the practice of generosity. Now, I invite you to join me in prayer as we ask God's blessing over this time of offering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
you claim us as sons and daughters through baptism in Jesus Christ. And just as Jesus lived to do your will, we ask that you would help us to seek your kingdom continually. Bless these offerings that they may extend the work of your church, lifting up hope and new life through Jesus Christ in our world. And Lord, we pray these things in the name of your beloved Son. Amen.
Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So uh, some of you may be familiar, familiar with the movie Memento. It was a Chris, uh, uh, sorry, Christopher Nolan movie that came out in 2001. And, and I realize now that was 20 years ago. But it's a, it's a good movie if this kind of thing interests you. It's a bit of a thriller. Um, but the main character in the movie is a guy named Guy Pierce, And he has something that's called ant- anterograde amnesia. And what it is is he can't form new memories. And so he has no long-term memory. He can't form new memories. Uh, in addition, uh, his short-term memory only lasts for 15 minutes. So I want you to imagine that for a minute. So you, you, you can't form any new memories, so your long-term memory doesn't work. And the only things you can remember, you can remember in 15 minutes at a time. So it's in the context of these memory limitations uh, that Pierce is, is, is goes throughout this movie, but he's trying to solve his wife's murder. And so he has to constantly leave himself pictures, leave himself notes, leave himself little clues, so that every 15 minutes, think about this, he can remember who he is, he can remember what's happened to him, and he can kind of, you know, find his way to the next clue as he tries to solve this, this case. Uh, I was thinking about this movie this week as I thought about the importance of memory. But can you imagine? Uh, and, and it reminds us of just how important memory is in our day-to-day lives. But uh, I'm sure none of us have experienced anyone with that severe a memory loss. I mean, this happens in movies, Right. But I imagine that all of us have known somebody with dementia or with Alzheimer's. My grandmother, uh, my my mother's mother, my nana, uh, developed Alzheimer's. And by the time she passed away, she couldn't remember really anybody. Uh, My grandfather, uh, my pop-op, cared for her as long as as he possibly could. But eventually, she was moved into a memory unit in a retirement community. But he would go to see her every single day, and they would sit Uh, They would drink coffee. They would hold hands. And I always remember one of the nurses told my family that my Nana, by the the time the end came, she didn't even know who he was, but she knew that they went together. But again, can you imagine life without the ability to remember? Uh, Memory is such an important part of life as we know it. Uh, Our ability to remember helps us to know who we are. It helps us to keep connection with other people. It also helps us to learn things from the past, right, so that we can chart our way to a, to a better future. You know that old expression, right? Uh, those who don't remember the past are what? They're doomed to, to repeat it. So do you know that a major part of what the Bible calls God's people to do is to remember? Uh, the Passover meal that happens once a year in the Jewish tradition was instituted in the book of Exodus by Moses. It was actually ex- instituted by God, but Moses is the one who brought it to the Jewish people. And that meal really has one purpose, to remember. To remember God and to remember the mighty deeds of God and how he freed the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. Uh, if you think about it, when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, 
uh, when he gathered with his disciples and he told them, you should eat this bread and you should drink this wine and you should do it for what reason? In remembrance of me. Jesus tells us that when the Holy Spirit is sent, uh, when we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is remind us, helps us to remember all that Jesus has taught us to do. So we see this over and over again in the scriptures, this call to remember. See, apparently, God knows something about humanity. God knows that we have a memory problem. God knows we forget. We forget God. We forget who we are. And we forget who we are called to be. Reverend Tim Keller tells a fascinating story about a time that he caught himself telling a lie. So he was at a meeting, and a man uh, came up to him at the end of the meeting, and earlier he had promised this man that he would do something. The man had asked him to do something. He said, sure, I'll take care of it. And at the end of this meeting, the man came up to him and said, hey, Tim, you know, remember that thing we talked about? How's it going? Are you taking care of it? And Tim said in that moment he had two choices. He could either tell the truth, which was he had completely forgotten, or he could lie to the man. And he said, I, ch- I chose to lie. And so I told the man, oh, yeah, I got that. I'm taking care of it. He said, and then, then he went home and he immediately, uh, you know, set about to try to, to do this thing he said he would do. But as he reflected on that, he asked himself the question. He said, why did I lie? By the way, it's a pastor, good, good Christian man, I mean, a really good Christian thinker. Why did I lie? And he said, some people would say that it was just a failure of will, right? It was a moral failing. But Tim said what he realized was that in that moment, he had forgotten who he was. See, in that moment, uh, he had a choice. He could either uh, reflect, really think on and focus on what this man thought of him. Uh, this man was going to think he was a failure. This man was going to think he wasn't a man of his word. This man wasn't going to trust him anymore, and he, and he worried about all of that, as opposed to remembering and thinking about uh, who he was in God, that I'm God's child, that I'm eternally secure, that even when I make mistakes, God loves me and God forgives me, and I can, I can re- recover from those stakes, mistakes and move on. He said, so in that moment, the reason he lied was that he forgot who he was in God. So this week has been a a rough week in our nation. Uh, I think many of us uh, maybe turned on our television or other devices and and saw uh, mobs of angry people in Washington, D.C. storming the U.S. Capitol. I mean, I couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, People broke through barricades. They shattered windows. Uh, eventually occupying the chambers of Congress and even the offices of some Congress people. I got to tell you, I was angry at what I saw. Uh, this was not just an attack on a building. This just was, wasn't just about breaking glass. More than property was damaged in this moment. Our elected officials, our elected representatives, had to hide behind their desks. Guns were drawn in the chamber of the U.S. Senate. Uh, This was an attack on the fabric of our nation, the fabric of our democracy. So I got to tell you, I believe that the protesters who broke the law should be held accountable for this. Uh, I think we as a nation must continue to explore all that this and other incidences are are teaching us about race and racism in our country. I find it hard to believe that any American would defend the actions of these individuals. Uh, And we have a lot of healing to do as a nation. And of course, there are no shortage of opinions about uh, why this happened and who's to blame. But I got to tell you, I think that part of the problem is we've forgotten. We've forgotten God. We've forgotten who we are and we have forgotten who we were made to be. So today we remember Jesus' baptism. Uh, Mark tells us that when Jesus was baptized, a voice came from heaven and said, you are my son, my beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And in our baptisms, we believe that God claims us, that God tells us, you are my child, my son, my daughter, you are my beloved. In baptism, God claims us us. Baptism is also about the washing away of sin. It's about death and rebirth into new life in Christ. Uh, It's an initiation into the life of the church. 
Now, some wonder why Jesus was baptized. I mean, did Jesus have sin that he needed to be forgiven for? And the answer to that, the simplest answer is no, he didn't. But did Jesus need to hear the words, you are my son, my beloved? I think he did. I have to believe that there were times in Jesus' life when he needed to know those words. He needed to lean back on that time when God claimed him so clearly. Uh, There was that time of his temptation. It happens right after this where the devil says to him, if you are the son of God, if, trying to make him doubt his identity. There was the time his family thought he was crazy. They gathered outside a doorway where he was teaching and tried to drag him away and saying, come on, Jesus. There were all the times that his disciples uh, got confused or didn't understand and completely missed the point of what he was trying to to teach. Uh, I have to believe in those times that he replayed those words over and over again in his head. You are my son, my beloved. Uh, When he was in Gethsemane, when that whip lashed against his back, When he hung on a cross dying, I have to believe that the words of his baptism uh, lifted him and carried him through. You are my son, my beloved. Now, I'm tired of saying it, and I know that you all are probably tired of hearing it, but we are living in challenging times. Uh, Remember when we thought that 2020 was bad? Well, here we are, a week into 2021, and, and things are still turned upside down. Now, I don't have a magic wand to make everything better, Uh, but I do know this. Better will only begin when we start to remember. Uh, When we remember God, when we remember who we are, and when we remember what we were made to be. Do you remember? Do you? Jesus told his disciples, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, so you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. John Wesley said that Christian people are called to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. And the peacemakers employ all the strength and talents God gives them to preserve peace where it is and to restore it where it isn't. Now, peace doesn't mean that we ignore injustice, uh, but it means that we seek justice, not through violence, but through confession, through repentance, through love, through reconciliation. Do you remember? Do you remember what the prophet Micah said about justice? He said, do justice, yes. But you know what he says right after that? Love kindness. Walk humbly. Do you remember? We are God's children. We are God's representatives. We are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We are here to welcome the refugee, to heal a broken planet, to feed the hungry, to build bridges of trust, not walls of fear. We're here to share our gifts with the world, to seek justice and peace for all people, and to bring Christ's light into the world. Do you remember? You are my daughter. You are my son, my beloved. Remember. Remember. So one of the things that we do uh, often, really almost every year at the beginning of a new year, is we take the time to renew our baptisms, to remember our baptisms. And remember, through baptism, we are claimed as God's children. Through baptism, we are given a new identity in Christ. And so I do want to invite you to get that, get that bowl of water as we prepare for this moment. And also want to say to those of you who may not have been baptized, I mean, you can, uh, you're welcome to participate in this, in this moment as well, but I do want to encourage you to uh, send me an email, reach out to the church, and let's talk about uh, getting you baptized uh, if you're ready to take that step in your life in Christ. And now I want to invite you to join as together we reaffirm our baptisms. Let us pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the gate of heaven and revealed yourself as Father by calling Jesus your beloved Son and sending upon him in baptism the dove of your Holy Spirit. 
You claimed us as your children when you brought us to your freedom through the waters of baptism. Come among us now as we renew the covenant made with you then and empower us to live the redeemed life to which you call us. And so I ask you to renew your decision to follow Christ. Do you turn to Christ as Savior, Lord, and friend? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of all of your sins? I repent of all my sins. Do you renounce evil? I renounce evil. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for the gifts of water and the Holy Spirit. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. We thank you that out of death you raised your Son to glorious life. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this water, that as we recall our burial with Christ in baptism, we may share in his resurrection to new life. That having been born again of water and the Holy Spirit, we may remain forever in the number of your faithful children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I want to invite you to take that, uh, that vessel of water that you have and join me in this thanksgiving and blessing over that water. Uh, and as we do it, you may want to you know, put, put your hand in the water and, and touch it as we ask God's blessing upon it. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call us to our remembrance, the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. Amen. And now I just invite you to take some of that water, uh, place it on the top of your head, you know, maybe make the sign of the cross on your forehead, uh, maybe across your, uh, your, your chest. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And uh, take a moment, if there are others with you, invite them to share in this moment. And let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the sacrament of baptism and in it that you claim us as your sons, your daughters, as your beloved. Lord, in this time as we renew our baptism, help us to remember, to remember you, to remember who we are, and to remember who you have called us to be. And we pray these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I mentioned that uh, in baptism, we are uh, really initiated into the life of the church, into the, the people of God. And we live that out through very specific communities that are local congregations, like this one here at First United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. Uh, our founder, John Wesley, uh, told us that there is no such thing as a solitary Christian. And basically what he means by that is we can't live this Christian life alone. And so I always want to invite you uh, and encourage you, if you're not a member of a congregation somewhere, to consider making First United Methodist Church your church family. Uh, we have a gathering that we call Believe and Belong, where we talk about what it means to believe in Jesus, what it means to confess him as Lord and Savior. We also talk about what it means to be a committed part of a community of faith. And so if you're interested in becoming a part of First United Methodist, I invite you to attend Believe and Belong. The upcoming dates are January 24th and 26th. Uh, you can reach out to Karen Milioto, uh, let her know that you're coming, just say, hey, I, I want to attend. And we also would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin 
Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested, my life began The ash was redeemed, only beauty remains My orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested, my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, he faithfully pulled. He canceled my debt, he called me his friend. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace, oh, your grace, so Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices though heaven was lost. But then Jesus arose and freed him. Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. It's your endless love to be down on us. You have made us new. As you go from this time, I want to encourage you to remember. Remember God. Remember who you are, a child of God, a son, a daughter, God's beloved. Remember who you were created to be and go and live like it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.